Sports and Health. Unit 31. An ounce of prevention. Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. I want to get more exercise and they require a medical exam before I can start. What kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. Sports and Health Unit 31 An Ounce of Prevention Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. I want to get more exercise, and they require a medical exam before I can start. What kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. Sports and Health Unit 31 An Ounce of Prevention Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. I want to get more exercise, and they require a medical exam before I can start. What kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. Sports and Health Unit 31 An Ounce of Prevention Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. 
I want to get more exercise and they require a medical exam before I can start. What kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. Sports and Health Unit 31 An Ounce of Prevention Hi, Sandy. I have a question for you. Sure, Joe. I need to have a physical examination, and there is a new clinic on Elm Street. Have you heard anything about it? One of my friends went there recently. She said it was very hygienic and well run. It is great to have a new clinic close by, since there is a shortage of doctors around here. Why are you going? I've just joined a gym. I want to get more exercise, and they require a medical exam before I can start. What kind of tests do they want you to have? They want to know my blood pressure, how much I weigh, and results from a blood test to check for any possible diseases. I feel terrific, so I'm not worried. I had a routine checkup last month, and the doctor discovered that my blood pressure is a little high. It's not serious, but I am glad that I found out about it. I am walking every day, and I have to cut down on my salt intake. I would rather not take medicine if I don't have to. The change in diet has really made me feel better. You know the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think you are right. Prevention is very important. I'm going to call right now and set up an appointment. Unit 32. Herbal Medicine Everyone wants to be healthy. People see doctors. They take pills to stay healthy. However, plants have been used to heal for thousands of years. More and more people are trying herbs to stay healthy. Plants used to heal are called herbal medicine. There are many plants used in herbal medicine. Each plant is used in a certain way. Herbal medicine works more slowly than most pills. Many people think plants are gentle on the body. There are a lot of examples of helpful plants. Ginger can help your body. Eating ginger often may help you stay healthy. Another helpful plant is parsley. It can stop bad breath. Herbs may be gentler than some pills. However, this does not mean that anyone can take them in any way. You should always be careful. Some herbs can be harmful too. Too much rosemary can be very bad for your stomach. It can make you sick. Foxglove is a very pretty flower. It also has poison in it. Nevertheless, if you are afraid of using herbs, you may be surprised. You have probably already used some kind of herbal medicine. Coffee, garlic, ginseng, and peppermint are all used in herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is becoming popular again as people become more interested in their health. Unit 32. Herbal Medicine Everyone wants to be healthy. People see doctors. They take pills to stay healthy. However, plants have been used to heal for thousands of years. More and more people are trying herbs to stay healthy. Plants used to heal are called herbal medicine. There are many plants used in herbal medicine. Each plant is used in a certain way. Herbal medicine works more slowly than most pills. Many people think plants are gentle on the body. There are a lot of examples of helpful plants. Ginger can help your body. Eating ginger often may help you stay healthy. Another helpful plant is parsley. It can stop bad breath. 
herbs may be gentler than some pills. However, this does not mean that anyone can take them in any way. You should always be careful. Some herbs can be harmful too. Too much rosemary can be very bad for your stomach. It can make you sick. Foxglove is a very pretty flower. It also has poison in it. Nevertheless, if you are afraid of using herbs, you may be surprised. You have probably already used some kind of herbal medicine. Coffee, garlic, ginseng, and peppermint are all used in herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is becoming popular again as people become more interested in their health. Unit 32 Herbal Medicine Everyone wants to be healthy. People see doctors. They take pills to stay healthy. However, plants have been used to heal for thousands of years. More and more people are trying herbs to stay healthy. Plants used to heal are called herbal medicine. There are many plants used in herbal medicine. Each plant is used in a certain way. Herbal medicine works more slowly than most pills. Many people think plants are gentle on the body. There are a lot of examples of helpful plants. Ginger can help your body. Eating ginger often may help you stay healthy. Another helpful plant is parsley. It can stop bad breath. Herbs may be gentler than some pills. However, this does not mean that anyone can take them in any way. You should always be careful. Some herbs can be harmful too. Too much rosemary can be very bad for your stomach. It can make you sick. Foxglove is a very pretty flower. It also has poison in it. Nevertheless, if you are afraid of using herbs, you may be surprised. You have probably already used some kind of herbal medicine. Coffee, garlic, ginseng, and peppermint are all used in herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is becoming popular again as people become more interested in their health. Unit 32 Herbal Medicine Everyone wants to be healthy. People see doctors. They take pills to stay healthy. However, plants have been used to heal for thousands of years. More and more people are trying herbs to stay healthy. Plants used to heal are called herbal medicine. There are many plants used in herbal medicine. Each plant is used in a certain way. Herbal medicine works more slowly than most pills. Many people think plants are gentle on the body. There are a lot of examples of helpful plants. Ginger can help your body. Eating ginger often may help you stay healthy. Another helpful plant is parsley. It can stop bad breath. Herbs may be gentler than some pills. However, this does not mean that anyone can take them in any way. You should always be careful. Some herbs can be harmful too. Too much rosemary can be very bad for your stomach. It can make you sick. Foxglove is a very pretty flower. It also has poison in it. Nevertheless, if you are afraid of using herbs, you may be surprised. You have probably already used some kind of herbal medicine. Coffee, garlic, ginseng, and peppermint are all used in herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is becoming popular again as people become more interested in their health. Unit 32 Herbal Medicine Everyone wants to be healthy. People see doctors. They take pills to stay healthy. However, plants have been used to heal for thousands of years. More and more people are trying herbs to stay healthy. Plants used to heal are called herbal medicine. There are many plants used in herbal medicine. Each plant is used in a certain way. Herbal medicine works more slowly than most pills. Many people think plants are gentle on the body. 
There are a lot of examples of helpful plants. Ginger can help your body. Eating ginger often may help you stay healthy. Another helpful plant is parsley. It can stop bad breath. Herbs may be gentler than some pills. However, this does not mean that anyone can take them in any way. You should always be careful. Some herbs can be harmful too. Too much rosemary can be very bad for your stomach. It can make you sick. Foxglove is a very pretty flower. It also has poison in it. Nevertheless, if you are afraid of using herbs, you may be surprised. You have probably already used some kind of herbal medicine. Coffee, garlic, ginseng, and peppermint are all used in herbal medicine. Herbal medicine is becoming popular again as people become more interested in their health. Unit 33 Home Remedies Everyone gets a cold now and then. Doctors cannot cure colds. Sleep and rest are good for taking care of a cold. However, in almost every culture, most families have a home remedy for colds. These remedies are passed down from parents to children. They have changed very little over time. Different cultures use different ingredients. In Mexico, cinnamon, raisins, oregano, and hot water are used to make a special tea. Honey is sometimes added. A fruit called hennepap is used as a cold remedy in Puerto Rico. The fruit is cut up. It is then soaked in water. Sugar can be added to make it sweet. Chicken soup is popular in America. A large chicken is boiled in a pot. Carrots, onions, garlic, and other vegetables are usually added. Ginger tea is used to help a cold in China. A ginger root is peeled. It is then crushed. The ginger is boiled for about 30 minutes. Some honey can be added after it is done. Each family usually has a home remedy for a cold. Some remedies work, some do not. Some taste good, others do not. No matter what, home remedies are sure to be around for a long time. Unit 33 Home Remedies Everyone gets a cold now and then. Doctors cannot cure colds. Sleep and rest are good for taking care of a cold. However, in almost every culture, most families have a home remedy for colds. These remedies are passed down from parents to children. They have changed very little over time. Different cultures use different ingredients. In Mexico, cinnamon, raisins, oregano, and hot water are used to make a special tea. Honey is sometimes added. A fruit called hennepap is used as a cold remedy in Puerto Rico. The fruit is cut up. It is then soaked in water. Sugar can be added to make it sweet. Chicken soup is popular in America. A large chicken is boiled in a pot. Carrots, onions, garlic, and other vegetables are usually added. Ginger tea is used to help a cold in China. A ginger root is peeled. It is then crushed. The ginger is boiled for about 30 minutes. Some honey can be added after it is done. Each family usually has a home remedy for a cold. Some remedies work, some do not. Some taste good, others do not. No matter what, home remedies are sure to be around for a long time. Unit 33. Home Remedies Everyone gets a cold now and then. Doctors cannot cure colds. Sleep and rest are good for taking care of a cold. However, in almost every culture, most families have a home remedy for colds. These remedies are passed down from parents to children. They have changed very little over time. Different cultures use different ingredients. In Mexico, cinnamon, raisins, oregano, and hot water are used to make a special tea. Honey is sometimes added. A fruit called hennepap is used as a cold remedy in Puerto Rico. The fruit is cut up. It is then soaked in water. Sugar can be added to make it sweet. Chicken soup is popular in America. 
A large chicken is boiled in a pot. Carrots, onions, garlic, and other vegetables are usually added. Ginger tea is used to help a cold in China. A ginger root is peeled. It is then crushed. The ginger is boiled for about 30 minutes. Some honey can be added after it is done. Each family usually has a home remedy for a cold. Some remedies work, some do not. Some taste good, others do not. No matter what, home remedies are sure to be around for a long time. Unit 33 Home Remedies Everyone gets a cold now and then. Doctors cannot cure colds. Sleep and rest are good for taking care of a cold. However, in almost every culture, most families have a home remedy for colds. These remedies are passed down from parents to children. They have changed very little over time. Different cultures use different ingredients. In Mexico, cinnamon, raisins, oregano, and hot water are used to make a special tea. Honey is sometimes added. A fruit called hennepap is used as a cold remedy in Puerto Rico. The fruit is cut up, it is then soaked in water. Sugar can be added to make it sweet. Chicken soup is popular in America. A large chicken is boiled in a pot. Carrots, onions, garlic, and other vegetables are usually added. Ginger tea is used to help a cold in China. A ginger root is peeled, it is then crushed. The ginger is boiled for about 30 minutes. Some honey can be added after it is done. Each family usually has a home remedy for a cold. Some remedies work, some do not. Some taste good, others do not. No matter what, home remedies are sure to be around for a long time. Unit 33 Home Remedies Everyone gets a cold now and then. Doctors cannot cure colds. Sleep and rest are good for taking care of a cold. However, in almost every culture, most families have a home remedy for colds. These remedies are passed down from parents to children. They have changed very little over time. Different cultures use different ingredients. In Mexico, cinnamon, raisins, oregano, and hot water are used to make a special tea. Honey is sometimes added. A fruit called hennepap is used as a cold remedy in Puerto Rico. The fruit is cut up, it is then soaked in water. Sugar can be added to make it sweet. Chicken soup is popular in America. A large chicken is boiled in a pot. Carrots, onions, garlic, and other vegetables are usually added. Ginger tea is used to help a cold in China. A ginger root is peeled, it is then crushed. The ginger is boiled for about 30 minutes. Some honey can be added after it is done. Each family usually has a home remedy for a cold. Some remedies work, some do not. Some taste good, others do not. No matter what, home remedies are sure to be around for a long time. Unit 34 Too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, coffee can't be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there, too. This doctor in Italy? Found a lot of benefits. Such as? She says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. 
I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? Unit 34 Too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, coffee can be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there, too. This doctor in Italy found a lot of benefits. Such as? She says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches, too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? Unit 34 Too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, coffee can be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there, too. This doctor in Italy found a lot of benefits. Such as? She says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches, too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? Unit 34 Too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, coffee can be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there, too. This doctor in Italy found a lot of benefits. Such as? She says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches, too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? Unit 34 Too much of a good thing? Hi, Jenny. Are you drinking coffee again? Hi, Sam. This is my third cup. Are you sure it's all right to drink so much? Don't you think all that caffeine is bad for you? No, that's a misconception. Everyone thinks coffee is bad for you, but it's not. Really? According to an article I read, 
Coffee can be beneficial to your health. That's interesting, but you should remember that one study does not prove much. There are a lot of other studies out there, too. This doctor in Italy found a lot of benefits. Such as? She says the chemicals in coffee can be good for your heart and may relieve headaches, too. I know that some coffee can be good sometimes, but drinking too much is not beneficial. Coffee has a lot of caffeine, which is addictive. It affects your blood circulation and removes calcium from your bones. The doctor did admit that it is not for everyone and that you shouldn't drink more than three cups a day. You seem nervous when you drink a lot. And remember when you told me that you are not sleeping well? Do you think that maybe you should cut back? I appreciate your concern. I was thinking of cutting back. Would you like a cup of green tea? Unit 35 Soccer Rules Soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Although the main idea of the game is easy to understand, there are many rules to be followed. A player gets a yellow card for not following the rules. A yellow card is a warning. If a player keeps breaking the rules, he gets a red card. When this happens, he cannot play anymore. He is ejected from the game. Another rule is about handling. Handling is when another player touches the ball with his hands on purpose. Players cannot handle the ball. A player may not do anything that is dangerous to another player. He cannot kick an opponent's leg to get the ball. There are also some lesser-known rules. A player is not allowed to impede an opponent. This means that a player cannot purposely slow down another player on the field. A penalty can be called if this occurs. There is a rule about blocking a goalkeeper too. A yellow card or an indirect kick can be given to the opponent's team if the player tries this. Yes, soccer is full of rules. Unit 35, Soccer Rules Soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Although the main idea of the game is easy to understand, there are many rules to be followed. A player gets a yellow card for not following the rules. A yellow card is a warning. If a player keeps breaking the rules, he gets a red card. When this happens, he cannot play anymore. He is ejected from the game. Another rule is about handling. Handling is when another player touches the ball with his hands on purpose. Players cannot handle the ball. A player may not do anything that is dangerous to another player. He cannot kick an opponent's leg to get the ball. There are also some lesser-known rules. A player is not allowed to impede an opponent. This means that a player cannot purposely slow down another player on the field. A penalty can be called if this occurs. There is a rule about blocking a goalkeeper, too. A yellow card or an indirect kick can be given to the opponent's team if the player tries this. Yes, soccer is full of rules. Unit 35, Soccer Rules Soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Although the main idea of the game is easy to understand, there are many rules to be followed. A player gets a yellow card for not following the rules. A yellow card is a warning. If a player keeps breaking the rules, he gets a red card. When this happens, he cannot play anymore. He is ejected from the game. Another rule is about handling. Handling is when another player touches the ball with his hands on purpose. Players cannot handle the ball. A player may not do anything that is dangerous to another player. He cannot kick an opponent's leg to get the ball. There are also some lesser-known rules. A player is not allowed to impede an opponent. This means that a player cannot purposely slow down another player on the field. A penalty can be called if this occurs. There is a rule about blocking a goalkeeper, too. A yellow card or an indirect kick can be given to the opponent's team if the player tries this. Yes, soccer is full of rules. Unit 35, Soccer Rules Soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Although the main idea of the game is easy to understand, there are many rules to be followed. 
A player gets a yellow card for not following the rules. A yellow card is a warning. If a player keeps breaking the rules, he gets a red card. When this happens, he cannot play anymore. He is ejected from the game. Another rule is about handling. Handling is when another player touches the ball with his hands on purpose. Players cannot handle the ball. A player may not do anything that is dangerous to another player. He cannot kick an opponent's leg to get the ball. There are also some lesser-known rules. A player is not allowed to impede an opponent. This means that a player cannot purposely slow down another player on the field. A penalty can be called if this occurs. There is a rule about blocking a goalkeeper too. A yellow card or an indirect kick can be given to the opponent's team if the player tries this. Yes, soccer is full of rules. Unit thirty-five: Soccer rules. Soccer is one of the most popular sports in the world. Although the main idea of the game is easy to understand. There are many rules to be followed. A player gets a yellow card for not following the rules. A yellow card is a warning. If a player keeps breaking the rules, he gets a red card. When this happens, he cannot play anymore. He is ejected from the game. Another rule is about handling. Handling is when another player touches the ball with his hands on purpose. Players cannot handle the ball. A player may not do anything that is dangerous to another player. He cannot kick an opponent's leg to get the ball. There are also some lesser-known rules. A player is not allowed to impede an opponent. This means that a player cannot purposely slow down another player on the field. A penalty can be called if this occurs. There is a rule about blocking a goalkeeper too. A yellow card or an indirect kick can be given to the opponent's team. If the player tries this, yes, soccer is full of rules. Travel and transport. Unit thirty-six. Visit Frisco City. Frisco City is the place for your next vacation. The city has lots of shopping, food, and fun. There are so many things to do. The River Walk is a must-see. Take a city bus to any of the three downtown stops. There you will find stairs. The stairs go down to the riverside. There are about five kilometers of sidewalk on either side of the river. Palm trees and cypress trees decorate the area. There are also tropical plants. You will see many unique shops, casual cafes, and upscale restaurants. Every shop is different. You can ride one of the river boats and hear a guide talk about the history of the River Walk. However, the River Walk is only one of the attractions of Frisco City. There are also two amusement parks just outside Frisco City. You can enjoy a day of fun in the sun at Water World Park. You can also spend the day enjoying the roller coasters and other rides at Sunland. Visit Frisco City. You will have a great time. Travel and transport. Unit thirty-six. Visit Frisco City. Frisco City is the place for your next vacation. The city has lots of shopping, food, and fun. There are so many things to do. The River Walk is a must-see. Take a city bus to any of the three downtown stops. There you will find stairs. The stairs go down to the riverside. There are about five kilometers of sidewalk on either side of the river. Palm trees and cypress trees decorate the area. There are also tropical plants. You will see many unique shops, casual cafes, and upscale restaurants. Every shop is different. You can ride one of the river boats and hear a guide talk about the history of the River Walk. However, the River Walk is only one of the attractions of Frisco City. There are also two amusement parks just outside Frisco City. You can enjoy a day of fun in the sun at Water World Park. You can also spend the day enjoying the roller coasters and other rides 
at Sunland. Visit Frisco City. You will have a great time. Travel and Transport Unit 36. Visit Frisco City. Frisco City is the place for your next vacation. The city has lots of shopping, food, and fun. There are so many things to do. The river walk is a must-see. Take a city bus to any of the three downtown stops. There you will find stairs. The stairs go down to the riverside. There are about five kilometers of sidewalk on either side of the river. Palm trees and cypress trees decorate the area. There are also tropical plants. You will see many unique shops, casual cafes, and upscale restaurants. Every shop is different. You can ride one of the river boats and hear a guide talk about the history of the river walk. However, the river walk is only one of the attractions of Frisco City. There are also two amusement parks just outside Frisco City. You can enjoy a day of fun in the sun at Water World Park. You can also spend the day enjoying the roller coasters and other rides at Sunland. Visit Frisco City. You will have a great time. Travel and Transport Unit 36. Visit Frisco City. Frisco City is the place for your next vacation. The city has lots of shopping, food, and fun. There are so many things to do. The river walk is a must-see. Take a city bus to any of the three downtown stops. There you will find stairs. The stairs go down to the riverside. There are about five kilometers of sidewalk on either side of the river. Palm trees and cypress trees decorate the area. There are also tropical plants. You will see many unique shops, casual cafes, and upscale restaurants. Every shop is different. You can ride one of the river boats and hear a guide talk about the history of the river walk. However, the river walk is only one of the attractions of Frisco City. There are also two amusement parks just outside Frisco City. You can enjoy a day of fun in the sun at Water World Park. You can also spend the day enjoying the roller coasters and other rides at Sunland. Visit Frisco City. You will have a great time. Travel and Transport Unit 36. Visit Frisco City. Frisco City is the place for your next vacation. The city has lots of shopping, food, and fun. There are so many things to do. The river walk is a must-see. Take a city bus to any of the three downtown stops. There you will find stairs. The stairs go down to the riverside. There are about five kilometers of sidewalk on either side of the river. Palm trees and cypress trees decorate the area. There are also tropical plants. You will see many unique shops, casual cafes, and upscale restaurants. Every shop is different. You can ride one of the river boats and hear a guide talk about the history of the river walk. However, the river walk is only one of the attractions of Frisco City. There are also two amusement parks just outside Frisco City. You can enjoy a day of fun in the sun at Water World Park. You can also spend the day enjoying the roller coasters and other rides at Sunland. Visit Frisco City. You will have a great time. Unit 37. Asking for Directions Asking for directions can be risky. I realized exactly how risky it could be when I needed to meet one of my friends one day. A while ago, I arranged to meet my friend at a new mall. My friend had been there before and indicated that we should shop there together. We planned to meet at 3 p.m. at Burger Palace in the mall. When I arrived at the mall, 
I realized I did not know where Burger Palace was, so I asked a woman for directions. She advised me to go straight past the bank and turn right before the food court. She mentioned that I would walk for a few minutes, passing a shoe store, until I reached Burger Palace, which was next to the bookstore. I followed her directions and arrived just in time. Twenty minutes later, I was beginning to wonder where my friend was. Thirty minutes later, I was worried. I did not know what to do, so I just kept waiting. At around 3.40 p.m., I saw my friend walking quickly toward me. I rushed to him and demanded to know what happened. I was at the other Burger Palace, he cried. We had not realized there were two Burger Palaces in the mall. Since then, I have made sure that I get the directions from my friends before I go to meet them. It saves me a lot of trouble. Unit 37. Asking for Directions Asking for directions can be risky. I realized exactly how risky it could be when I needed to meet one of my friends one day. A while ago, I arranged to meet my friend at a new mall. My friend had been there before and indicated that we should shop there together. We planned to meet at 3 p.m. at Burger Palace and the mall. When I arrived at the mall, I realized I did not know where Burger Palace was, so I asked a woman for directions. She advised me to go straight past the bank and turn right before the food court. She mentioned that I would walk for a few minutes, passing a shoe store, until I reached Burger Palace, which was next to the bookstore. I followed her directions and arrived just in time. Twenty minutes later, I was beginning to wonder where my friend was. Thirty minutes later, I was worried. I did not know what to do, so I just kept waiting. At around 3.40 p.m., I saw my friend walking quickly toward me. I rushed to him and demanded to know what happened. I was at the other Burger Palace, he cried. We had not realized there were two Burger Palaces in the mall. Since then, I have made sure that I get the directions from my friends before I go to meet them. It saves me a lot of trouble. Unit 37. Asking for Directions Asking for directions can be risky. I realized exactly how risky it could be when I needed to meet one of my friends one day. A while ago, I arranged to meet my friend at a new mall. My friend had been there before and indicated that we should shop there together. We planned to meet at 3 p.m. at Burger Palace and the mall. When I arrived at the mall, I realized I did not know where Burger Palace was, so I asked a woman for directions. She advised me to go straight past the bank and turn right before the food court. She mentioned that I would walk for a few minutes, passing a shoe store, until I reached Burger Palace, which was next to the bookstore. I followed her directions and arrived just in time. Twenty minutes later, I was beginning to wonder where my friend was. Thirty minutes later, I was worried. I did not know what to do, so I just kept waiting. At around 3.40 p.m., I saw my friend walking quickly toward me. I rushed to him and demanded to know what happened. I was at the other Burger Palace, he cried. We had not realized there were two Burger Palaces in the mall. Since then, I have made sure that I get the directions from my friends before I go to meet them. It saves me a lot of trouble. Unit 37. Asking for Directions Asking for directions can be risky. I realized exactly how risky it could be when I needed to meet one of my friends one day. A while ago, I arranged to meet my friend at a new mall. My friend had been there before and indicated that we should shop there together. We planned to meet at 3 p.m. at Burger Palace and the mall. When I arrived at the mall, I realized I did not know where Burger Palace was, so I asked a woman for directions. She advised me to go straight past the bank 
and turn right before the food court. She mentioned that I would walk for a few minutes, passing a shoe store, until I reached Burger Palace, which was next to the bookstore. I followed her directions and arrived just in time. Twenty minutes later, I was beginning to wonder where my friend was. Thirty minutes later, I was worried. I did not know what to do, so I just kept waiting. At around 3.40 p.m., I saw my friend walking quickly toward me. I rushed to him and demanded to know what happened. I was at the other Burger Palace, he cried. We had not realized there were two Burger Palaces in the mall. Since then, I have made sure that I get the directions from my friends before I go to meet them. It saves me a lot of trouble. Unit 37. Asking for Directions Asking for directions can be risky. I realized exactly how risky it could be when I needed to meet one of my friends one day. A while ago, I arranged to meet my friend at a new mall. My friend had been there before and indicated that we should shop there together. We planned to meet at 3 p.m. at Burger Palace and the mall. When I arrived at the mall, I realized I did not know where Burger Palace was, so I asked a woman for directions. She advised me to go straight past the bank and turn right before the food court. She mentioned that I would walk for a few minutes, passing a shoe store, until I reached Burger Palace, which was next to the bookstore. I followed her directions and arrived just in time. Twenty minutes later, I was beginning to wonder where my friend was. Thirty minutes later, I was worried. I did not know what to do, so I just kept waiting. At around 3.40 p.m., I saw my friend walking quickly toward me. I rushed to him and demanded to know what happened. I was at the other Burger Palace, he cried. We had not realized there were two Burger Palaces in the mall. Since then, I have made sure that I get the directions from my friends before I go to meet them. It saves me a lot of trouble. Unit 38. Fixing a Flat When your car gets a flat tire, do not panic. First apply your brakes and pull over. Inside the trunk, you will find a spare tire and a toolbox. One of these tools is a jack, which is a tool you use to raise the car. This makes the tire easy to remove. Position the jack beneath the car, behind the tire that is flat. Insert the jack handle and turn it clockwise. Continue turning the handle until the car rises high enough so that the flat tire is well off the ground and spins freely. Make sure that the jack is securely supporting the vehicle. If the car is unsteady or the jack is unstable, lower the car. Reposition the jack and begin again. Next, use a crowbar to pry off the hubcap, the metal cover on the side of the tire. Inside the hubcap are four bolts that hold the tire in place. Loosen these using the long L-shaped tool. Push firmly on the tool to get the bolts to turn. It may be difficult. Once the bolts are loose, the flat tire can be pulled off easily. Now you can put on the new tire. Once it is in place, replace the four bolts and tighten them. Place the flat tire and the toolbox back in the trunk. Finally, drive to the nearest service station and get your flat tire fixed. Unit 38. Fixing a Flat When your car gets a flat tire, do not panic. First apply your brakes and pull over. Inside the trunk, you will find a spare tire and a toolbox. One of these tools is a jack, which is a tool you use to raise the car. This makes the tire easy to remove. Position the jack beneath the car, behind the tire that is flat. Insert the jack handle and turn it clockwise. Continue turning the handle until the car rises high enough so that the flat tire is well off the ground and spins freely. 
make sure that the jack is securely supporting the vehicle. If the car is unsteady or the jack is unstable, lower the car, reposition the jack, and begin again. Next, use a crowbar to pry off the hubcap, the metal cover on the side of the tire. Inside the hubcap are four bolts that hold the tire in place. Loosen these using the long L-shaped tool. Push firmly on the tool to get the bolts to turn. It may be difficult. Once the bolts are loose, the flat tire can be pulled off easily. Now you can put on the new tire. Once it is in place, replace the four bolts and tighten them. Place the flat tire and the toolbox back in the trunk. Finally, drive to the nearest service station and get your flat tire fixed. Unit 38. Fixing a Flat When your car gets a flat tire, do not panic. First apply your brakes and pull over. Inside the trunk, you will find a spare tire and a toolbox. One of these tools is a jack, which is a tool you use to raise the car. This makes the tire easy to remove. Position the jack beneath the car behind the tire that is flat. Insert the jack handle and turn it clockwise. Continue turning the handle until the car rises high enough so that the flat tire is well off the ground and spins freely. Make sure that the jack is securely supporting the vehicle. If the car is unsteady or the jack is unstable, lower the car. Reposition the jack and begin again. Next, use a crowbar to pry off the hubcap, the metal cover on the side of the tire. Inside the hubcap are four bolts that hold the tire in place. Loosen these using the long L-shaped tool. Push firmly on the tool to get the bolts to turn. It may be difficult. Once the bolts are loose, the flat tire can be pulled off easily. Now you can put on the new tire. Once it is in place, replace the four bolts and tighten them. Place the flat tire and the toolbox back in the trunk. Finally, drive to the nearest service station and get your flat tire fixed. Unit 38. Fixing a Flat When your car gets a flat tire, do not panic. First apply your brakes and pull over. Inside the trunk, you will find a spare tire and a toolbox. One of these tools is a jack, which is a tool you use to raise the car. This makes the tire easy to remove. Position the jack beneath the car behind the tire that is flat. Insert the jack handle and turn it clockwise. Continue turning the handle until the car rises high enough so that the flat tire is well off the ground and spins freely. Make sure that the jack is securely supporting the vehicle. If the car is unsteady or the jack is unstable, lower the car, reposition the jack, and begin again. Next, use a crowbar to pry off the hubcap, the metal cover on the side of the tire. Inside the hubcap are four bolts that hold the tire in place. Loosen these using the long L-shaped tool. Push firmly on the tool to get the bolts to turn. It may be difficult. Once the bolts are loose, the flat tire can be pulled off easily. Now you can put on the new tire. Once it is in place, replace the four bolts and tighten them. Place the flat tire and the toolbox back in the trunk. Finally, drive to the nearest service station and get your flat tire fixed. Unit 38. Fixing a Flat When your car gets a flat tire, do not panic. First apply your brakes and pull over. Inside the trunk, you will find a spare tire and a toolbox. One of these tools is a jack, which is a tool you use to raise the car. This makes the tire easy to remove. Position the jack beneath the car behind the tire that is flat. 
insert the jack handle and turn it clockwise. Continue turning the handle until the car rises high enough so that the flat tire is well off the ground and spins freely. Make sure that the jack is securely supporting the vehicle. If the car is unsteady or the jack is unstable, lower the car. Reposition the jack and begin again. Next, use a crowbar to pry off the hubcap, the metal cover on the side of the tire. Inside the hubcap are four bolts that hold the tire in place. Loosen these using the long L-shaped tool. Push firmly on the tool to get the bolts to turn. It may be difficult. Once the bolts are loose, the flat tire can be pulled off easily. Now you can put on the new tire. Once it is in place, replace the four bolts and tighten them. Place the flat tire and the toolbox back in the trunk. Finally, drive to the nearest service station and get your flat tire fixed. Unit 39, the exchange rate. Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the bolivar. The exchange rate is 200 bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate, but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange $100? I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash, and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful. I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela. Unit 39. The Exchange Rate Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the bolivar. The exchange rate is 200 bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange $100? I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful. I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela. Unit 39. The Exchange Rate Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the bolivar. The exchange rate is 200 bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate, but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange 
I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash, and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful. I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela. Unit 39 The Exchange Rate Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the Bolivar. The exchange rate is 200 Bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate, but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange $100? I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash, and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful. I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela. Unit 39. The Exchange Rate Welcome to the Atlanta International Airport, ma'am. How may I help you? I am traveling to Venezuela. Can you tell me what the exchange rate is for the dollar? One moment, please, and I will look it up. The currency in Venezuela is the Bolivar. The exchange rate is 200 Bolivars per dollar. That seems rather low. Are you certain that that is all the dollar is worth? There may be several local businesses that may exchange for a higher rate, but the official rate is the one I gave you. Can I exchange $100? I need to have some money for a taxi and a hotel once I arrive in Caracas. No problem. Here is your money. Would you like a receipt? Yes, please. I will need it to keep track of my business expenses. Is there anything else I can do for you? I just have one more question. Do you know where I can exchange dollars in Venezuela once I arrive? I will probably need more cash, and I want to find a reliable exchange. The best place to exchange money is at a large bank. They will always give you the official rate. You can also find money exchange stores in most large cities. Wonderful. I will look for a bank. I appreciate your advice. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy Venezuela. Unit 40. The First Nations The First Nations are the people who lived in North America before Europeans migrated there. There is a place in Canada where you can learn about the culture of the First Nations. It is where the First Nations people used to live. Now, a visitor center is there. There is also an archaeology lab and walking trails. You can learn about the culture through the displays in the center. The displays show everyday activities. They show how the people lived. The gift shop in the visitor center sells crafts made by the First Nations people. There are jewelry, paintings, and pottery. You can also eat at the restaurant. Bison meat is in many dishes. There are also wild rice dishes, fruit pies, and traditional bread. All of the food is tasty. The archaeology lab is run by the local university. 
A big window lets you see the archaeologists working. They found a very old spearhead. They also found ancient human bones. The First Nations Visitor Center is a great place. You can learn about the First Nations culture. You can also see archaeologists at work. You can walk on the trails or enjoy a traditional meal. It is an experience to remember. Unit 40 The First Nations The First Nations are the people who lived in North America before Europeans migrated there. There is a place in Canada where you can learn about the culture of the First Nations. It is where the First Nations people used to live. Now, a visitor center is there. There is also an archaeology lab and walking trails. You can learn about the culture through the displays in the center. The displays show everyday activities. They show how the people lived. The gift shop in the visitor center sells crafts made by the First Nations people. There are jewelry, paintings, and pottery. You can also eat at the restaurant. Bison meat is in many dishes. There are also wild rice dishes, fruit pies, and traditional bread. All of the food is tasty. The archaeology lab is run by the local university. A big window lets you see the archaeologists working. They found a very old spearhead. They also found ancient human bones. The First Nations Visitor Center is a great place. You can learn about the First Nations culture. You can also see archaeologists at work. You can walk on the trails or enjoy a traditional meal. It is an experience to remember. Unit 40 The First Nations the First Nations are the people who lived in North America before Europeans migrated there. There is a place in Canada where you can learn about the culture of the First Nations. It is where the First Nations people used to live. Now, a visitor center is there. There is also an archaeology lab and walking trails. You can learn about the culture through the displays in the center. The displays show everyday activities. They show how the people lived. The gift shop in the visitor center sells crafts made by the First Nations people. There are jewelry, paintings, and pottery. You can also eat at the restaurant. Bison meat is in many dishes. There are also wild rice dishes, fruit pies, and traditional bread. All of the food is tasty. The archaeology lab is run by the local university. A big window lets you see the archaeologists working. They found a very old spearhead. They also found ancient human bones. The First Nations Visitor Center is a great place. You can learn about the First Nations culture. You can also see archaeologists at work. You can walk on the trails or enjoy a traditional meal. It is an experience to remember. Unit 40. The First Nations The First Nations are the people who lived in North America before Europeans migrated there. There is a place in Canada where you can learn about the culture of the First Nations. It is where the First Nations people used to live. Now, a visitor center is there. There is also an archaeology lab and walking trails. You can learn about the culture through the displays in the center. The displays show everyday activities. They show how the people lived. The gift shop in the visitor center sells crafts made by the First Nations people. There are jewelry, paintings, and pottery. You can also eat at the restaurant. Bison meat is in many dishes. There are also wild rice dishes fruit pies, and traditional bread. All of the food is tasty. The archaeology lab is run by the local university. A big window lets you see the archaeologists working. They found a very old spearhead. They also found ancient human bones. The First Nations Visitor Center is a great place. You can learn about the First Nations culture. 
You can also see archaeologists at work. You can walk on the trails or enjoy a traditional meal. It is an experience to remember. Unit 40 The First Nations The First Nations are the people who lived in North America before Europeans migrated there. There is a place in Canada where you can learn about the culture of the First Nations. It is where the First Nations people used to live. Now, a visitor center is there. There is also an archaeology lab and walking trails. You can learn about the culture through the displays in the center. The displays show everyday activities. They show how the people lived. The gift shop in the visitor center sells crafts made by the First Nations people. There are jewelry, paintings, and pottery. You can also eat at the restaurant. Bison meat is in many dishes. There are also wild rice dishes, fruit pies, and traditional bread. All of the food is tasty. The archaeology lab is run by the local university. A big window lets you see the archaeologists working. They found a very old spearhead. They also found ancient human bones. The First Nations Visitor Center is a great place. You can learn about the First Nations culture. You can also see archaeologists at work. You can walk on the trails or enjoy a traditional meal. It is an experience to remember.